my goodness! There's been a murder in the forest! <laughs> Let's look for clues. No, not that kind of clue. Oh! oh sorry. Time to take a closer look. Any likely culprits? Hmm. Speedy? Nah. Hmm. When you have excluded the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. This is evidence of a rotting tree. Could this be death by fungus? Not all fungus is friendly. Oh boy, this is gonna get tricky. There are more species of fungus than plants. Well, while all fungi share some common characteristics, they can be broken into groups based on the main roles that they play in the ecosystem as symbiont, decomposer, and parasite. Let's investigate each of these to discover who done it. Number one, decomposers. Decomposer fungi are critically important to the ecosystem, feeding on decomposing organic matter, breaking it back down into the soil. These fungi usually grow in the soil or on fallen logs. Their fruiting bodies are usually the smaller mushrooms here. These beautiful mushrooms grow singly or in groups. Okay, I don't see any on this tree. And they wouldn't kill a tree anyways. They're decomposers. But I also noticed that the center of this tree is missing. Another clue! Okay, the next group of fungi to investigate is symbiotic. What comes to mind when I say that trees can talk. What do you think you're doing? Well, I can't speak on behalf of those, but what I do know is that trees are communicating by sending and receiving messages, strengthening defenses, and sharing nutrients for success. How do they do it? Each tree in the forest along the Wild Pacific Trail has a number of different fungi associated with its roots. These fungi are fed by sugars from the tree, and then the fungal threads in the soil, the mycelium, gather water and minerals for the tree. But the fungi on the roots of one tree are usually connected to the roots of nearby trees, forming an underground fungal network in what we call the wood wide web. It's a web connecting trees and other plants, and this can be spread for kilometers underneath us right now. In Oregon, mycelium of one individual fungus has been found covering 10 square kilometers, or nearly four square miles. That's 1,665 football fields. These networks can transport essential nutrients like carbon, phosphorus, nitrogen from plant to plant. Instead of competing for nutrients in the forest, the trees and mushrooms may be working together to help each other out. It is no longer a fight for survival. Fungus can even store nutrients for later, like a bank. Trees that don't need sugar right now give it to the fungi, and when they need it, the fungi can give it back. This underground network helps strengthen the forest, key to growth and success. So we love them, but symbiotic fungus would not kill a tree. It would actually help it. So we can rule that one out. Um, I come from Tlaukwet. My name is Giselle. There's a prayer that's been shared with me by uh, one of my grandpas, Levi Martin Kamat. And the first word of that prayer starts with Yud Hapisah. Yud Hapisah means let us walk slowly, carefully, with dignity, honor, respect, and humility. Scientists might talk about how the whole forest is interconnected with mycelium, with mushroom fungi, and that the plants communicate through that. Um, but that is also really old traditional New Channels knowledge that the forest is interconnected and is in constant communication and is receptive of our thoughts and emotions and how we carry ourselves and how we practice Yud's Hapasat.
Hmm, what else could it be? Ah, a red-belted conch. This is indicating brown crumbly rot, a tree disease, which is a third category of fungus, parasite fungus. A parasite derives its nutrition from a live host. Sometimes that's you. For example, athlete's foot. Mm -mm. Usually a conch, this mushroom fruiting body, is the first sign of infection on the surface of a tree. This red belted conch is leathery and shaped like a shelf. Brown crumbly rot can sneak into a tree from any wounded bark and cause damage, slowly breaking down the heartwood. It weakens the tree, making the tree more susceptible to falling over or snapping off in strong winds and storms. It can take months to years depending on conditions and the tree health. And look at this conch! Ingenious! Some people call these fruiting bodies bracket fungus. Some people call them shelf fungus. But we call them conchs. After the sound that they make when they fall on your head. When you see multiple conchs on the tree, they're likely the fruiting bodies of one individual fungus. So you can actually help these healthy trees by not damaging them along the trail. So there it is! Slow Death by Parasitic Fungus the red belted conch. It's clear to see now that this tree experienced a slow, long natural death. It's rather elementary, my dear Watson. Case closed. What a wise investigator. This fungus is actually pretty common on dead trees. And even though it can attack healthy wounded trees, fungus has a very important ecological role helping to break down the dead trees and plant litter. Without these decomposers, the leaf litter and debris would pile all around us in the forest, meters high. Everything is connected. These hidden underground systems are proof. Let's work together to help protect these natural wonders and the spectacular coastal trail network.